Over the past two years, Poor Boys Productions set out to document the trip of a lifetime for five skiers. Never felt water that cold. For nearly two decades, the Four Boys production crew have been filming the best skiers on the planet to make their annual ski film. Join us this episode as we take an in-depth look at the 2013 film, Tracing Skylines. I got the call from Poor Boys, obviously, to come down here on a solely scoping mission. No skis, no bags, nothing, just to come check it out. Poor Boys' uh, plan is to come down and shoot in Detroit solely for a month. Usually we'll hop in chasing the storm, so we're kind of throwing all our eggs into one basket. It's like all in. If this fails, then where are we going to go after? Nowhere. The ski season's done pretty much for urban, you know? Coming to Detroit, I actually had all these really high hopes of, of things just being magic, honestly. We got to see it in real life. For an urban ski, it's a dream. We're about, what are we, one, two, three, we're six stories up right now. And um, lots of possibilities for skiing, but this place is unreal. So in December, we went out to Detroit on a scoping mission. We took Lee Powis and Cody Carter. They went and checked out the area and everything went really well. So it was on and it was time to go. Well, here we are guys, six weeks later. Um, went and checked out Detroit. Now we're ready to move out. Uh, we're leaving the west side of the state in Washington. About ready to travel 2,500 miles to Detroit and meet up with all the boys. The first bump in the road came sooner than expected. Lee's a no-go with his knee, and on top of that, his visa's up. So I got the call from Cody, Lee was out. So I had to figure out what to do, and the first guy that popped into my head was Carl Fosfit. Carl's nickname is Crazy Carl, and there's a reason why. He's an absolute maniac in urban. He was the perfect fit for Detroit. Just got to Detroit, and we don't have shit for snow here. Wondering why I just left that blizzard. In 2012, Carl Fosfett was named Rookie of the Year for his performance in the Poor Boys Productions film, We, a Collection of Individuals. So a couple of years ago, a group of us had this idea of skiing urban in Detroit as part of the movie. We thought it would be super cool to ski abandoned buildings and be in some like really rough areas. But what we didn't realize is Detroit is, has got some problems. You know, those buildings are abandoned for a reason. It's dangerous, it's big, it's abandoned, and it's a challenge for sure. There's a lot to Detroit. No jobs, no jobs again. Nothing look around you. No jobs, nothing. Everything is on lock. Some people might think that Detroit is a dangerous city, that it's corrupt and stuff like that. But that's from the outside looking in. It takes a lot if you're going to stay in the city. If you stay in the city, you know, you feel a different vibe. You know, it's a lot of opportunities and it's a lot of blessings coming in the city of Detroit. I can't tell, but I'm smiling right now because super stoked on how this thing is coming together. What it takes.
ways to make the world go round. That's why the haters want to bring you down. It's how you get it, how you really going to run this town. Living lavish and savage when out and getting cabbage. I got to have it to grab it until I got that life. Just uh, cruising around in Detroit. Scoping, wait for snow. The, the vibe is destruction and drugs and violence. I'm feeling like a little bit queasy in my stomach, man. Build a jump right here at an angle. Just try to pop right into that first down and grease it. It doesn't snow that much in Detroit, and one of the biggest challenges was actually getting snow to the beach. Grass is greener on the other side because we're covering it with snow right now. It's what it takes to make the world go round. What I want to try to do is gap over this right rail and land on the down of the left. Hopefully we at least get to try. I'm a little worried about getting kicked out. So we've been, we got permission to hit this five kink. Uh, then the cops came. Then the guy we originally got permission from came and pulled the plug on it, and really, there's nothing we can do right there. Got a few hits in, and then we got shut down. Dang. Super bomb, man. Yeah. We didn't come in. Okay. I thought you guys were going to be sledding down the hill. We had permission. A bunch of people came, got involved. Cops got called. The guy had a misunderstanding, thought we were sledding down the hill. No go. I'm not crazy about it, but there's snow around and it's doable, so yeah, I mean, I could definitely see us hitting this thing. I like this for a nighttime feature with that snow right there. Um, that kink would actually be pretty fun. You don't come across too many six kings. Three, two, one. Tough to have been here a week and only hit three features, but with what we're dealing with snow-wise, stoked to get another shot and I've got another feature in the bag. For the crew, we set them up just outside of Detroit, you know, in the suburban area, and the crew would venture in every day into the rubble and look for features. We're just driving around, taking a pretty mellow day, scouting uh, for new zones, and we uh, just saw this kind of sledding hill with these stairs up the side, and figured why not take a quick, quick stop and go for the unofficial world's longest firecracker record. Exceptional, just uh, having fun here in Michigan. Day 14, we finally found snow. It's finally snowing, actually. About time. Late night double urban mission, here we go. Since there wasn't much snow, we really had to move quickly when it did snow. We had to get things done fast, and we knew we had to do multiple features in one day.
uh, there's still a bunch of cars in front of the down rail we wanted to hit and we just found this like stupid little C rail. We didn't like it exactly how we wanted to but we still managed to like get something different. And, I mean we're just trying to kill time here so what better way to kill time than to winch up a C rail. It's like three or four in the morning now and we did three features in one day and everyone's definitely pretty worn from importing snow to everything. Uh, yeah, everything's really exhausting shooting here right now because we wish we had at least six inches of snow and we got about half an inch. You have danger in every city you go into. Part of it is what's your motivation of going in and if you're too idealistic to realize that you're in a dangerous situation. One morning we got up super early and sent it to this abandoned hospital we had found and First thing in the morning when we showed up, it was made known that we were not welcome there. We've been trying to do this import feature this morning. Carl just called. This guy's been rolling up kind of aggressively and talking, asking if, you know, why we're here, what we're doing. So this guy's like trying to force us out right now. So who's this guy coming up? Some dude, he's super sketchy and seems to crack out of his mind. You want me to hang out here for a little bit? I kind of like the idea of like you just got to keep you in, that card. you hanging out here with someone else, so you can get an idea of what's going on if he comes back and we're not around, and we'll go get a f***ing truckload of snow. Dude, like this is somewhat sketchy. Like they won't call the cops. It is it's like sketchy. they're. <sighs> we're done. They're just they're trying to chase us out. So, I mean, can't show any aggression, but you gotta just do your thing, so. When we were pulling out of the parking lot at that hospital, another truck showed up. Guys in the back with ski masks eyeing us down, and that's when we knew we had crossed into the wrong territory. At that point, our whole crew was on the verge of calling it a trip. We had to reevaluate what we were doing here. Dude, up, seriously, dude? that was crazy. Yeah. Like, is, was I tripping out or did we just get chased out of an abandoned hospital by a truck full of dudes in ski masks? Rather than packing up and heading home, we figured we'd at least explore some of Detroit's suburbs and try to get a little more skiing in. folks and welcome to the beautiful city of Detroit, Michigan. We're here for a month-long urban trip. Due to a lack of snow, we've uh, decided to do a little skiing up this here creek bed. We got a high-speed winch that gets us going about 50 miles per hour. January in Detroit, why the hell not? Water skiing in January will make you cold. Crazy. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll be hanging here for the next little while. Uh, Everyone else went to get lunch, but they said they'll be back in a little bit to finish the interview, so I'm just hanging tight. Fun so cold. Dude. <laughs> hey, you need me to uh, give your lens a little swipe there? Clean that baby off a little bit. <laughs>
After weeks of little snow and difficult conditions, Carl calls in reinforcements, brought in the boys. We finally got a bunch of snow and we're here at high school. Not quite sure when it was abandoned, but you know, nothing's better than an abandoned school because you can come here and gym on a school day. So I've been chosen in the ancient skies of taking sex in this world where they never been. Like a fallen cherub and bringing the terror in. Boomer systems tuning in the power frequencies. Even though we knew the dangers were still there, we all decided that we needed to get back in the city and get back in these buildings and give it another shot. Got fresh skis, fresh bindings, fresh crew. Gonna go get our uh, step up from the fourth floor to the fifth floor. Horsemen's endorsements. Uh, we got a little bit of snow, so we came up here and uh, built this thing about twice as wide as it was before. And uh, me and Kai just had a really uh, good session. Super fun feature. Uh, sure enough, found this corner of this building here that's just so perfect for a wall ride. We only have about two inches of snow, but Pete's constructing a really cool lip out of cinder blocks. This is probably one of the cooler features we've come to, and hope the corner of the building doesn't collapse. Knowing that there was still so much to this city that we had yet to explore, I don't think anyone in the crew was ready to leave this place. Spent about probably two or three hours yesterday getting all the snow off this roof to make uh, this and uh, rained last night. Still can't believe it's here and built and possibly doable, but still not 100% confident we'll be able to do what we want to do, but we can try. We can do about 12 yards of snow per load. Like yeah, once it's ready to go, all they have to do is put their skis on and do what they do best. Right. So, Sweet. which is hopefully their best. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Still just eyeing out the feature, seeing if we can figure out something that's going to work, but jump over this. Boom, biggest cinder block lift you've ever seen. We're going to go really fast, land on a ton of snow over there. And dump trucks, cinder blocks, dump trucks, nail, cinder block. nail, tires, 
Tetanus. Tetanus. Uh, hey mom. Was wondering if you know if I'm up to date on my tetanus shots. I just stepped on a nail. This is what I want to do. I want to do a big jump over some sketch. I don't know how much more sketch you can get than crumbling concrete and nails. Brick by brick. We haven't had a single truckload of snow show up yet. We're trying to hit this tomorrow. I think that we can fill up more space, putting tires underneath, pallets on top. I mean, we should plan for having less snow than we think, because, I mean, once that snow's consolidated, like 50 yards sounds like a lot of snow, but it's really not that much. Never used a bunch of cinder blocks, tires, and rubble and pallets to build a jump in a abandoned building before. Oh, yeah. I'd like to find somebody else who's done something crazier. We are stacking a ton of tires here because we're gonna come skiing from inside there and jump through all that stuff and land there. And we're doing it with. No snow other than what we're bringing in with our two trucks. Hope we can uh, make it happen with a bunch of imported snow. Booyah. What are you ready for? Chilling, riding chairlifts, skiing pal, oh. and, and checking some big air here tomorrow. It's day two at the Bible Gap. Just uh, stopped out the Enron, waiting on a uh, one more trailer load of. Ice shavings from the local ice skating rink. Uh, pretty stoked, the cops rolled by, but they stalled, we stalled long enough, and they got a homicide call, so they dipped, and we're still here. Hope they don't come back. I think it's going to be a really good session. I'd say it's about the biggest urban landing I've ever seen, but about the smallest landing I've ever seen for a jump this size, so yeah, that's, that's pretty true. sick. I'll call in the air. Tails. Heads. Ooh, heads. <laughs> Carl pick. All right, Kai can get it. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you get me it? I don't have a choice. I'll do it. How'd that look? Oh yeah, you got it, dude. That was plenty. Yeah, plenty. So You're gonna be going huge. Dude. We're gonna be going huge.
be somewhere that's as hostile as this place and to leave feeling accomplished was just incredible. In many ways I can't even believe it because Detroit never represented the trip of a lifetime to me. It represented an opportunity for us to test our will and test our determination to put skiing on the brink.